Hi, I'm Frank, the Low Carb Cocktail Guy. This video is going to be a little bit different than all my other videos. Well, not really. It kind of is all my other videos. Recently, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions in my YouTube comments, uh, Facebook, Instagram, throughout my social media. Hey, can you make this video? Can you make this in a video? Can you make this in a video? And really, most of those things I already had. So I'm just really just replying, yeah, sure, I did that. Here you go. And I sent out a link. And I was talking to some friends of mine. They said, man, maybe you should just do a compilation video of all the videos people are asking for. And it's really, it's just all my liqueurs. Nobody's really asking for recipes a whole lot. A lot of people are asking for like an Irish cream or a coffee. So basically, I'm just getting a lot of people asking for liqueur videos that I already have. A couple years old, nothing's really changed. So I'm going to go ahead and do a compilation video of all my liqueurs in one video. It's going to be a long one, so there'll be some timestamps so to click back and forth on different liqueurs you want to see. And maybe a couple of mixers or two as well. So guys, uh, sit back. Um, enjoy the video. Uh, Turn it on while you're in the kitchen, listen to it in the background. <laughs> that all helps my YouTube watch time and the algorithm. So yeah, go ahead and try that out. That helped me out a little bit. I'm gonna tell you now, thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy Frank's fucking fantastic films. I don't know why I said that, but anyway, and away we go. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Low Carb Cocktails. I'm Frank, the Low Carb Cocktail Guy. Now, we're gonna kinda talk a little bit about some liqueurs. Uh, but last week I did about, talked about infusions and liqueurs. And I made this. You'll never guess what this is. It's just a clear mason jar full of a clear liquid. But, where'd I put it? I put it, oh, it's over here. Uh, I'm going over here. I finally found this. Now it's a little late in the year because usually this is usually with spring and summertime drinks, but I finally found a time to go ahead and make it, and that is a substitution for Malibu. How to substitute a sugar-free Malibu or a coconut rum. Super easy. Now it did take me about four or five different tries to get the flavors right on. Um, it's really, really close to this, but better. It's a little bit better than this. I like the taste of this a little bit better. So I'm not gonna go ahead and build it because it's super easy. You're gonna need eight ounces of an allulose syrup. Check the description below, get your allulose on Amazon. Make sure you use my link because it does help me out as an affiliate link. And next, you're going to need eight ounces of clear rum. 15 bucks at Walmart. Mm, uh, I think it's even might be less than that. Yeah, hey, about 15 bucks at Walmart Bacardi here. So I got eight ounces of rum, eight ounces of allulose syrup, and coconut extract. This is all you need to make your sugar-free Malibu substitute. So, or I'm just gonna call it coconut rum because I can't say that it's this because that's illegal and I'll get sued by Malibu. So it's not Malibu but it is a coconut flavored rum. So again, real simple, really short, eight ounces, eight ounces, three teaspoons, three teaspoons. My allulose syrup, there'll be a link up here about how to make that, but it's one to one ratio, water and uh, allulose. That's it guys, super easy. If you're into coconut rums, if you're looking for some of those tropical drinks that call for Malibu, but you're on the low carb diet, you're on keto, and you really can't have that much sugar that Malibu has, um, make your own, make your own. All right, guys, that's it. Y'all have a good night. Um, I might shoot another video tonight, I don't know. So just finished my amaretto sour video, check that out. And the one before that, how to make your amaretto. So guys, y'all have a great night, because after this one, I'll be having a great night too. See y'all later. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Low Carb Cocktails. I'm Frank, the Low Carb Cocktail Guy, and with me again today, if you've seen some of my other videos, is Mr. Barry, the Cajun Keto Chef. So make sure you check out his channel. Um, he's helped me out with a couple of things today. Um, so we're gonna be going over how to make an amaretto today. Um, amaretto, that almond liqueur that's so high in sugar. We're gonna show you how to do this with zero carbs. Zero. Zero? Zero carbs. Oh my God. So. My favorite, brother. That's it. So we're gonna start off with this. So this is one cup of my allulose syrup. You can check out that video right about here. 
Also, there'll be a link in the description below where you can purchase uh, Allulose on Amazon. It is an affiliate link. It does help me out, so thank you for getting it there. Um, so, also, it's I know it's brown, if you can see that. That is the addition of Swerve brown sugar. So Swerve is an erythritol base, and it's gonna have zero net carbs. So all my sweetener, zero carbs. The spirits can be zero carbs, and the extract zero carbs. But we're gonna have an amaretto with zero carbs. As my chemistry teacher called it, skiro. Yeah. My chemistry teacher in high school called it skiro carbs. Skiro carbs. So, in a mason jar, or some airtight jar that you have, you're gonna take one cup of your allulose syrup and one quarter cup of Swerve Brown Sugar Sweetener. You're gonna put that in your jar. So that's that. So next you're gonna be adding vodka. 80 proof vodka is fine. You're gonna add two cups of the vodka. Two cups? Two cups. This, this recipe is gonna make basically a regular size bottle of Amarillo you would buy and make the same volume. So we're gonna go with two cups of vodka. And this is how easy this is. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. Now this is where it comes in. You can take vanilla extract. You're gonna do, let me get it. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So we got that, two teaspoons. Now this is where the other part is the almond. Because Amarillo is an almond liqueur, you have to have the almond. And yes, the almond is a lot more predominant, so we're gonna be adding two tablespoons of almond extract. Now there's a lot of recipes you can find on the internet where it says, um, where it says use apricot pits and things like that. If you wanna go through all that trouble, knock yourself out. Will it be better? I don't know, maybe. Never tried it that way. This is a very easy, super fast way to make amaretto. Now this is slightly warm because I did warm my simple syrup with the brown sugar to dissolve it. Let's mix it up a little bit. We can smell it, Barry. Hmm. I can smell it from here. Oh my God, I'm ready. So I'm just giving you a little so sample, ready. just a little sample Thank of you. my Super fast, super easy, zero carb, I'm ready. Say that 10 times real fast. Oh my God. Brother, you knocked it out. Ah, uh, yes, room, I did. brother. <laughs> you nailed it. Give All right, guys. So, super short video, uh, how to make an easy zero carb amaretto. So guys, thank y'all for watching because I see an amaretto sour coming up in the next few minutes. I'll be having a good night too. See y'all later. To another episode of Low Carb Cocktails. Uh, today I brought a friend with me, Barry Ingolio. He is the Cajun Keto Chef. Check him out on YouTube. We uh, just started doing his channel uh, a couple weeks ago. Tons of, well, uh, there will be tons. There's, there's a lot of great Cajun recipes. We just did a gumbo, uh, we did a shrimp etouffee, how to make a roux. A lot of great insight for you guys who want to eat keto and Cajun dishes at the same time. Barry's your guy. Um, he's, I think he got jambalaya coming up. Yep, that's gonna be the next one. I'm fired up about that one. For yeah, me. I think we're really excited about the jambalaya video. So what brought him here today is we're talking about um, the different things to in, in, to enhance your cocktails. And one of the things is orange liqueur, triple sec, Grand Marnier, those types of things um, that are really essential in so many different cocktails. Margaritas, kamikazes, cosmopolitans, they all have an orange liqueur. Now you can do this a really simple way. You can take a little bit of vodka, a little bit of simple syrup, sugar-free simple syrup, of course, and then add a little orange extract, bam, orange liqueur. But we're gonna step it up and make a really nice, nice one. And I've had people who tried my orange liqueur compared to, I think we have some right here. Uh, I'll write the next chef up. Yeah, we get yeah, it right there. Uh, got to it. this, yeah. um, triple set. And yes, it's, this is the stuff that you shouldn't be drinking if you're low carb or keto, but I do have this so I can taste test when this is ready to how good this is. And so far, every single time, mine's always better. So from here, um, we've already gone ahead and peeled seven oranges already. And I'm, I'll show Barry a neat little trick how to peel an orange. 
quickly, and we'll see if you can do it. Oh. Quickly with a little bit of weight. So all right. the way you do this, you do it more of a spiral. So you just top at one at the tip of it, and you just spiral all the way around it, and the entire orange peel should come off all in one piece. So let's see how he does. Yeah, I haven't been successful at that yet. Ah, oh, you got some earlier today. That weren't too bad. All right. And this is put me on a camera to see if I can do it right, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Absolutely, absolutely. <coughs> Try not to get it too thick either, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. You remember that. You don't want to go too deep on the skin. You got the white part of the skin that's called the pith. That can make it bitter. So just trying to keep as little of that off as possible. And look at that. It just got a little tip on the end. All right. I'll, awesome. I'll nail that right there. Yeah, so that is this is eight orange skins. This is three cups of an allulose simple syrup. And this is what makes it zero carbs. The sweetener, allulose. For me, I found that this is the best uh, sugar substitute I found for cocktails and things like that because it does truly do one-to-one -one sugar ratio. Um, sugar to allulose as far as sweetness, and it blends excellent in a one-to-one -one ratio with water to make syrups. So allulose is my go-to sweetener. There'll be a link in the description below. Um, go ahead and get yourself some uh, allulose on Amazon by clicking that link. It does help me out. It is an affiliate link, so I really do appreciate if you do that, guys. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna take our orange peels. We're just gonna drop it in our jar. Go ahead and drop those in, Barry. All right. I'm enjoying my Cuba Libre. Fancy name for a rum and coke with a splash of lime. All right. All right, so we got all that done. So we'll take this and move this aside. So next is the liquors that we're gonna be using. Now, if you're lucky enough to have Everclear 190 proof, which is 80% ABV, awesome. So this helps speed up the time. If you don't have that, get a high proof vodka, a 100 proof vodka, something like that. The higher the proof is, the quicker this is finished. So, but what I'm doing, I've got an 80 proof vodka, Pinnacle, you know, I think this was like 10 bucks, and uh, Everclear, the 190, and this is the game changer. Now, someone did tell me to use just the Everclear, leave the vodka out, and uh, it actually, it should, it should increase your volume that you end up with because you'll be cutting this back down to a 30% ABV. So, but in general, we're gonna start off with our vodka. We're gonna do, like I said, we have three cups of an allulose syrup, and this is gonna be six cups of liquid to, all together. So we're gonna do two cups of our vodka. If you use just the Everclear, does it take less time? It does, um, okay. theoretically. I've not tried it, so that'll be my next thing to do, is try that out. So we're gonna go with, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Tony. You just gotta pour slow. So that is two cups of vodka. And we're gonna do one cup of the Everclear. This stuff. Funny know. story is my son is in college. And uh, I was doing something one day and I said, I'm gonna teach you how to drink, son. Don't ever drink this if someone gives this to you. He goes, hey, take a shot of Everclear. So I gave him a shot of Everclear, 190. And boy, was he in for a surprise. <laughs> it was just funny. So, <laughs> he asked, I gave it to him, taught him a lesson. So, this normally, if you're using just an 80 proof vodka or even a 100 proof vodka, usually this has to sit for about three to four weeks. I find by adding the Everclear, I can cut that down to a week with this one last secret ingredient. Wanna grab my measuring spoons, Barry, right here? You're gonna go ahead and put in one teaspoon, I'm oh, sorry, one tablespoon of orange extract. That's it. That's it. That's it. So now you're enhancing the flavor. I said you can do just this, and you can leave out the um, and the volume will be different. You can leave out the um, orange peels and just use this and this with some allulose simple syrup, and you'll have a, a an, an okay orange liqueur substitute. But by adding the orange peels, put that in an airtight jar, shake it up every couple of days. You'll come back in a week. They'll strain it through a coffee filter, throw the raw skins away, and bam, orange liqueur. Now, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm also going to do a blue curacao video pretty soon, because this is the base of blue curacao. So blue curacao, it's just an orange liqueur with some blue food coloring. So that's all it really is. All It's all those pretty yeah. blue drinks. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're pretty drinks, mm -hmm. but they're high in sugar, 
because of uh, uh, blue curacao. Right. Now, there are some people that make a blue curacao syrup that says only two grams of carbs per serving, and that serving is a half a teaspoon. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. So, so guys, wrapping this up. So again, we're gonna put this aside for one week. Um, like I said, strain it all out, good to go. Now you have really great margaritas. You have really great cosmopolitans, kamikazes, all kinds of really, your, your cocktail repertoire is gonna open up immensely by having orange liqueur. All right guys, thank y'all for watching. And make sure you go check out Barry on the, the Cajun Keto, Keto Chef. Chef. Yeah, that's it. The Cajun Keto Chef. That's right, bitch. That's, that's it, that's <laughs> it. So yeah, check out those videos. And, uh, and if, if guys, if you subscribe to his channel, go ahead and leave comments. Uh, he does read all his comments and he does take those seriously. And uh, so if there's anything y'all like to see on the Cajun dish, yeah, just put that in his comments when you get there. Um, so that's it guys. Uh, see y'all later. Y'all have a great day because um, once this is done, I'm finished this one. We'll be having a great day too. Cheers. Cheers. See y'all later. Bye. All right, it's that time again. Time for another low carb cocktail. I'm Frank, the low carb cocktail guy. Now I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time now. Um, almost as long as I've been around on YouTube, which has been, uh, you know, pushing four years now. Uh, now I've done a lot of cocktails before during the spring and things like that, that were blue. And people ask, how did I make it blue? And I mentioned blue curacao. They're like, how do you get blue curacao low carb? Simple, you need two ingredients. Blue food coloring and a zero carb triple sec. So before you get started, make sure you check out that video, how to make a zero carb orange liqueur. And after you make that, bottle it and get some blue food dye. And that's kind of all we're gonna do. So now once you have your sugar-free orange liqueur made, jarred, mason jar, whatever you decide to put it in, pop it open, get your blue food coloring you start with three drops. Now, depending on how much orange color your orange liqueur picked up from the skins and uh, how much, or, or I should say how deep the blue dye is, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. I've done it as little as three, I've done as much as six. So just kind of shake that up and hold it up to a light. See, this is still a little green. So I'm gonna put another two drops. So that was three, so I'm gonna put in four, five, five drops of blue food coloring. Cap that up, give it a good shake. And I'm, I'm getting more blue, it's a little more teal. I'm not sure if you can see with the lights over there with you. Uh, but let's do one more drop. So this is gonna be six drops. And this, I'm saying, your mileage may vary depending on the, like I said, how orange your orange liqueur is and how deep of a blue your dye is. So, um, I'm almost okay with that. It's a little more blue than teal, but I'm gonna do one more. And this is all it is. You just kind of play with it until you get it right. And like I said, start with three, uh, then play from there. One drop at a time, kind of seeing where you want it to go. And there you go, that's the blue I want right there. So, DIY blue curacao, that's simple. So all you need is a DIY sugar-free orange liqueur. Make sure you use my recipe. It's gonna be delicious. And blue food coloring, that's it. So guys, that's it. So now what you're gonna see is I'll have some blue cocktails coming out soon um, using our blue curacao. That's all blue curacao is. It's an orange liqueur or a triple sec, whatever. Orange flavor liqueur with blue dye. That's it. So um, I think one of my wife's favorites with this is a purple margarita. So um, that might be my next video, it might be a purple margarita. I'll show you how to get that one done. All right guys, thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good day. Cause I'm making something with this and I'm gonna have a good day too. And <laughs> see y'all later. Two things, that's it. Hi and welcome back to another episode of Low Carb Cocktails. Can you guess what time it is? It's, it's tiki time. Finally, we're here to get started with our tiki season for the summer. This is gonna be done a little bit different from my previous tiki series. And if you haven't seen any of that yet, I'll leave a playlist right here. You can kind of check those out whenever you have some time. What I'm gonna do this time that I didn't do last time, 
is I'm gonna do a video on the ingredients, or well, specifically the mixers and syrups you're gonna need for these specific cocktails. So it's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna walk through the first three because they're basically dummy proof. And the first one is a basic simple syrup. And this is an allulose syrup. Allulose, you can pick this up on Amazon. That's where I get it. There, as a matter of fact, there'll be a link in the description below um, where you can pick this up on Amazon. It is an affiliate link. All the links in my description are. So it does help me out if you decide to shop on Amazon, if you go through my links. So let's kind of move on. Simple syrup with allulose, which I like about this. One cup sugar, more allulose one cup water, you have a simple syrup. Now this is gonna be the base for some of our other syrups. So outside of the simple syrup, the next one is a vanilla syrup. Vanilla syrup, now you can do this one of two ways. You can go ahead and get a vanilla bean, slice it open, scrape all the vanilla out, put it in there, and then set it in a pot of water, boil it with the allulose, things like that. Or you can do it a really easy way. One cup of simple syrup, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, you have vanilla simple syrup. So this is the two that you're gonna use here. And your simple syrup base is gonna be the base of every syrup you do. If you do a raspberry syrup, it's a simple syrup plus uh, boiling raspberries in it. Same thing with strawberries, mint. So really easy when you make a simple syrup using allulose, all you have to do is throw something in a pot that you want your simple syrup to taste like. The next one is a cinnamon simple syrup. You're gonna need some cinnamon sticks and a simple syrup. Now, what's different about this one is I use a brown sugar substitute. I use Swerve. I use their brown sugar substitute. Swerve's really good. Um, they're a local company. I've not tried their confectioners, but I've tried their granulated. Now, maybe I should give their uh, confectioners a try. I wasn't crazy about their granulated um, sweetener because it was a little cloudy and it did affect the color of the cocktails. Um, I heard that the powder, uh, confectioners or powdered doesn't do that. So I'm probably gonna give that a try next. But what I like about Swerve, first off, it's zero net carbs because it's erythritol. Um, so because of that, you do have to play with the ratios a little bit and I get that in a second. But they're a local company. They're right here in Louisiana. As a matter of fact, in New Orleans, just you know, 30 minutes away from where I live. Where I used I used to live in New Orleans, but uh, now a little further out. So, but Swerve is a local company and I always love supporting local. Uh, so, but basically being a urethritol, what I've found in the past is I have to do a different ratio. You can't do one-to-one -one because it's gonna crystallize. So to prevent that, I up the water a little bit. So what this actually is, it's gonna be one cup of the Swerve sweetener, the brown sugar, and two and a half cups of water. And that was perfect for this. Now, what I like to do with my cinnamon syrup also is the way you do this is, like I said, you'll put your one-third cup of um, Swerve brown sugar, and then you'll put one cup of water. So that's your, you can do it that way to get one cup, or you can do different ways, just basically two and a half to a one or a three to one, depending on how sweet you want it. So you put six cinnamon sticks, and what I like to do is I like to break them up. So I'll break them up, put six small cinnamon sticks in the pot, boil it all together, turn it down, let it cool, take the broken sticks out. But what I like to do afterwards, and this will really amplify your uh, cinnamon syrup, is you take two sticks, drop them in, and you leave it. And you leave it, and you leave it. So now, as the cinnamon syrup sits, it's sitting with those cinnamon sticks. Um, so it's still picking up that cinnamon flavor stronger and stronger and stronger the longer it sits. Now, the thing about your simple syrups, what I like to do is I add a about a tablespoon um, of vodka, depending on how much I have. If I have a 750 milliliter bottle, um, I'll use a, a two ounces of vodka. Um, if I'm going down to like a cup or two cups, I'll use anywhere from one tablespoon or roughly that of vodka, just to preserve it a little bit longer. But in all honesty, these don't last long enough to actually go bad. So simple syrup is gonna be your go-to for everything that you do. Next is your vanilla syrup and then your cinnamon syrup. And these will be used all in the cocktails that'll be coming up soon. So let's get this out the way and we're gonna talk about falernum. I love falernum. It's just fun to say, like falernum. It's kind of a fun word to say. Kind of my favorite word to say is chupacabra. Say chupacabra, chupacabra. It's just a fun thing to say. So what falernum is, 
It's a, a liqueur uh, from Barbados, dates back to the 1800s. And basically it's lime with um, ginger and some clove and some almond. So we're gonna kind of put this together really quick. Now this is gonna take a few days. This is why I'm gonna start off with the falernum and an allspice dram, because these take you know a few days to put together, steep to build the best flavors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the zest of four, no, I'm sorry, five limes. Now this is a recipe that I adapted from Distinguished Spirits YouTube video. Um, wonderful channel, full of tiki knowledge, tiki drinks. Um, so this is a recipe I got off of airs that I adapted a little bit, but I cut it in half because it makes a lot. As a matter of fact, they went bad before I even finished it last time. So we're gonna cut the recipe down in half. I'm gonna give you my half version of their recipe and we'll talk a little bit about it as we go. So in a jar, we have the zest, of five limes. Now, make sure when you do this, the best thing to use is a microplaner, if you have one of those. And uh, just make sure you're not getting a pit. Just get just the green. You want, if you're doing a big old bottle, you're gonna use nine to 10 limes, um, half serving, well, half a portion, I guess you say, of the recipe, we'll be doing five. Next is gonna be the cloves and the almonds. I took one, uh, so one tablespoon of blanched almonds and toasted them along with 20 whole cloves. So I toasted the almonds and the cloves together for about five minutes until it smelled toasty good. So we're gonna add that to the jar. Next is ginger. Now what I did is it's about a uh, two inch piece, you know, about maybe as thick as a quarter or so. Uh, just go ahead and peel that. Real easy to peel ginger. You can use a spoon, just scrape the skin off. That comes off super, super easy. And what I did is I cut them kind of julienne style. You can cut them in disc or whatever you do. Just you want to cut them. And that's going to be your base ingredients. Now we're going to add some lime juice and some simple syrup after. So to start off with, we're just going to go with this and let this sit. Now what we're gonna use is we're gonna be using um, Ray and Nephews Overproof Rum. That is what he called for. And I did think about using Hamilton's Demerara 151, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought that, hey, it's gonna, that's, that Demerara rum has just got a, such a beautiful taste to it. It's, I don't think it's gonna be good in a falernum. I think it's gonna take away. Um, you're gonna lose the, the other ingredients. You're gonna lose the clove. You're gonna lose, lose everything else because that rum is just so predominant. So we're gonna do, uh, let's see here, six, three ounces of a 151 overproof rum. So this is going to be two ounces. And then another ounce. So we're gonna add three ounces of an overproof rum. Now we're just gonna leave this sit this, just kind of slosh it around, let it sit for overnight. And then you're gonna come back afterwards uh, tomorrow. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, this can kind of be done in two parts. So we're gonna come back tomorrow after this sits and steeps for a little bit. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and build the other, the other liquids as well with it, which is gonna be the lime juice and uh, the simple syrup. So but for now, we're just gonna do the lime zest with the cloves and the almonds and the ginger. Let that sit in our simple syrup and, uh, oh, sorry, let that sit in our rum. And then we're gonna come back and add the other stuff to it later. So we're just gonna put this aside for now. And we're talking next about the allspice dram. Allspice dram, or some people call it pimento dram, is gonna be another ingredient that we're gonna be using in one of our cocktails. And you use this, and you make this with allspice berries. So you take a quarter cup of allspice berries, and if you have a mortar and pestle, I don't. Or if you have a spice grinder, I don't. So what I did is, is I took a quarter cup of allspice berries, put them in a Ziploc bag, and I went to town on them with a rolling pin. So, and you just go ahead, but now you don't want to make a powder out of it. You just want the berries crushed because they are hard. So you just want to make sure they're crushed and, and kind of, and cracked open. You don't want to go ahead and like turn it into a powder. So from here, we're going to take another mason jar. We're going to go, here we go. In the mason jar, we're going to add a quarter cup 
of crushed allspice berries. And we're going to add, where am I at? Oh, the rums. You'll find this a whole bunch of different ways. Some of them say um, it takes 12 days to make and then a month to set. Um, and I found some others that just weren't that quite that long. So what I'm gonna do is, I, cause I know this from, um, with triple sex and things like that, if you use a higher proof alcohol, it does speed up your steeping time. It does pull the oils and the flavors out of that herb or spice in this case, um, a little bit faster. Now the recipe I found calls for uh, one cup of light rum. So, but I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna use a half cup of light rum and I'm gonna use a half cup of overproof rum. So we're still going with the uh, one ounce of rum total, but we're just gonna split that up a little bit. So there's half cup of white rum and I am using 7.3, you know, like I said, support local 7.3 Black Pearl Rum. And then we're gonna go with four ounces or a half cup of Rain Nephew's Overproof Rum. There we go. Now a couple of these recipes, you'll be adding some other things and um, like this will have cinnamon in it as well and some other things like that. But to start off with, rum, allspice berries, let it sit overnight. Just like we're gonna let this sit overnight, we're gonna let this sit overnight. So the difference is once this sets, we're gonna drain all this out and we're gonna add up our other stuff on top of it. We're gonna strain this out. But see right now it's still kind of clear, this should be turned like a dark brown. And then tomorrow we'll strain this out. So this is gonna take about a week. This is gonna take about, uh, you know, about two days, two and a half days for this. So that is our falernum and our allspice dram. So we're gonna come back um, tomorrow. Well, maybe not tomorrow. I might come back the next day. And uh, once all this is drained, added in, and we're ready to set this apart. When we get to step two, we'll be back. We'll put all this together and show you how we're working out. All right, and we're back. So we're gonna go ahead and finish the allspice dram and the falernum. So if you remember from earlier, um, we got, went and put in the allspice berries into our jar and we soaked them in some rum and we did the same thing with some overproof rum with lime zest, uh, the blanched almonds, the uh, um, whole cloves, that was it, the whole cloves and the ginger. So these are our infusions and they set for, I know I said one day, but my work schedule pushed that back to four. So here we are four days later and man, does it smell really good. So we're gonna get started wrapping these up, starting and finishing. Uh, let's get and finish these. So what we're gonna need next, let's go work on a falernum. With the falernum, you're gonna add out some almond extract. That's vanilla. Um, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of the almond extract. Oh, this is a new bottle. I didn't take the seal off. So there's a quarter teaspoon of almond extract in the falernum. Next, we're going to use two ounces, uh, two and a quarter ounces of fresh lime juice our lime juice with my jigger here and a fresh lime juice is going to have two and a half grams of carbs so that's one and a half and this was left over so after i zested the limes did i say lemons earlier i probably said lemons after i zested the limes for the lime zest for the falernum i went ahead and i juiced them and just bottled it up for future use such as this and other drinks so next we're gonna do our simple syrup. And that's gonna be seven ounces of our simple syrup. Again, this is the allulose, so zero carbs. So we're gonna go with six and seven, here we go, seven ounces of our allulose simple syrup. So, and really that's it, that's your falernum. Tap that up. And this is gonna have per serving, which well, I'm calling an ounce of serving. Some of these recipes will have a half ounce, but per ounce is 0.35 grams of carbs per ounce, net carbs that is. So it kind of looks like I got the breakdown right here for you. Um, yeah, we're gonna have four carbs in the lime juice. When you divide that up by how much liquid, which is 12 and a half ounces of liquid, or 12 and a quarter, 
three point, sorry, 0.375 grams of carbs per ounce of our falernum. Falernum ready to go. So let's go ahead and move on to our allspice stram. So we're gonna wrap up our allspice stram and we're gonna go ahead and let me get to that. Allspice stram, zero net carbs because we did use the Swerve Brown Sugar, which is gonna be um, four total carbs, but it also has four erythritol, net carbs, all gone. So zero net carbs. So this is gonna require the brown sugar syrup. So, yep, that's my brown sugar. So outside of this before with this, what a, uh, yeah, with the cinnamon syrup, I went ahead and made just a plain brown sugar syrup because there are some other tiki drinks. Um, like I said, you'll catch those in a playlist above um, for my last year, or actually the year before last is tiki. So this is gonna do two thirds cup of a brown sugar syrup. We'll add that to the allspice blend. Well, I should say infusion, not blend. And then one cinnamon stick. Now, some recipes online says, either break the cinnamon stick up, throw it in the mason jar or whatever container you're using, let it sit for a day or two, and pull it out, and then you're good to go. You can do that, you can leave it in. Either way, we'll be using small amounts and it's, we're good. So there we have our allspice dram. So with the cinnamon infusion going on in a couple of days, this will be ready in about a day or two, and we'll check on that actually. We'll see how this does when we do our cocktail using the allspice dram. So those are the recipes for the two longest taking syrups to make. The allspice dram, because you do have to let the uh, rum and the allspice berries infuse for a few days. And the same thing with the falernum. You have to let the lime zest, the ginger, the almonds, and the clove um, steep for a few days um, as an infusion with the rum. So these take the longest. Now, kind of talk about some other things that I made also, in the meantime, is a honey syrup. This honey syrup is gonna have 2.5 net carbs per ounce. I was using the pure harmless honey. So this is how I made this. And the way it works out, um, let me break the math down for you. Um, for this, now I do normally use a different one, uh, different honey, which is lower, which is nature's hollow. And I wanna say it's, um, either one or, it's gonna be, I almost cut this in half, to almost maybe a half a gram of carbs or one carb um, per ounce. So this is gonna be one cup of water and a half cup of the honey substitute. There's four net carbs in a half ounce. So math, 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 math. Um, four net carbs and a half ounce of pure, honey, pure harmless honey. I use four ounces, so that makes 32 net carbs in this bottle. This bottle has 13 ounces of liquid, including the honey, and the um, water, a cup of water, I use a cup of water, like I mentioned, and I use one ounce of vodka as a preservative. So 13 ounces divided by 32 net carbs, two and a half, no, just actually 2.4 something. So I'm rounding up called two and a half net carbs in this. If you use um, Nature's Hollow uh, honey substitute, sugar-free honey substitute, you're gonna have less carbs than that. So the next mixer that you're gonna need for the Tiki videos that we're doing is going to be coconut cream. So this is still a little warm, so I haven't capped it off yet. I'm letting it cool. So the coconut cream. Now, this is a little thin for a coconut cream. You can add some xanthan gum to thicken that up. Uh, but you know, it's just really a texture thing at that point. I think this flavor is a spot on for a really good, um, where's it at? A good coconut cream. So what it is, one cup of unsweetened um, coconut milk, the Thai brand. Then I use, which is gonna have, I think it was two grams of carbs per third cup, which is that serving. Um, I use one cup of water and one cup of allulose. So the sweetener itself has zero carbs in it. All that math broken down comes out to 0.375. So just under 0.4, under a half, a gram of carbs and our coconut cream. Like I said, if you wanna thicken it up, you add a little xanthan gum and that'll take care of that. So kind of go over our mixers for the cocktail series that we're doing one more time, wrap it all up. All right, so as far as the mixers that you're gonna make, here they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven, um, this brown sugar for other cocktails from previous videos. But simple syrup, using all your loose, zero grams of carbs. Cinnamon syrup, using um, Swerve, the brown sugar substitute, zero carbs. A vanilla syrup, zero grams of carbs. The falernum, three point, sorry, nope, oh, oh, back it up, 0.35 grams of carbs. The allspice dram is gonna be zero grams of carbs. Our honey syrup, 2.5 grams of carbs. Our coconut cream is 0.375 grams of carbs. So here's all of our mixers, and all with the exception of the honey, 
They're under one gram of carbs per serving. Now, like I said, if you went with the Nature's Hollow, if I remember correctly, and I could be off, you're gonna cut that at least in half um, and bring that down to one gram of carb or less, um, depending on how you play with your ratios. So this is our mixers for tiki season and our cocktails are coming soon. All right, guys, y'all have a great day because when I'm finished using this and, and finishing this blueberry vodka cranberry thing that I made, <laughs> I'll be having a great day too. See y'all later. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Low Carb Cocktails. I'm Frank, the Low Carb Cocktail Guy. Today I brought a friend along again, if you've seen some of my other videos, my margarita video, and I think maybe my triple sec video, yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, Mr. Barry, the Cajun Keto Chef. Now he kind of wanted to start playing around in cocktails a little bit at home. So I said, hey, I'm shooting a video. Why don't you come by and uh, see how I'm making Baileys, making a low-carb Irish cream. That's what we're doing today. Yep. So we're making a Baileys. That's it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So in my mason jar, my big-ass mason jar, and I'll leave a link below to a video on how to set up your home bar on a budget. You don't need all these fancy bar tools. So just get a big-ass mason jar. So this one holds um, four cups of liquid. So in here I have my dry ingredients, which is gonna be a half teaspoon of unsweetened cocoa powder, a quarter cup of brown swerve, and a quarter cup of allulose is already in here. Now I have seen some recipes where they use only the brown swerve or only uh, a stevia, some type of sweetener, and I find that it's a little bit much on either aspect. If you're using just sweetener by itself, it turns out a little sweeter than I think. And if you're using just a brown swerve, it's a little too bold. Right. So we're kind of going to go in the middle with that. So because some recipes call for a half cup of the sweetener or a half cup of the brown swerve, we're cutting that in half, splitting the difference and doing a quarter cup of each. Now, for the rest of the fun stuff, we're gonna need some coffee. I got some coffee right there. Mr. Barry, grab that. So we're gonna add a half cup of brewed coffee. Now, all over the internet, you're gonna find use an instant coffee. I don't like the way instant coffee tastes. Uh, then you'll some people say use cold brew, uh, and you can use cold brew, and that's okay. So it, you can do that if you like. But what I find that is, what, what, what's the coffee you drink at home? What brand? Mainly community. Community coffee. Uh, at, we're a Starbucks coffee over here at my house. We're, we're, we're a little bougie. Yeah. <laughs> so we're a little bougie. We do uh, Starbucks coffee here at our house. So I find, I'll tell you is, use the coffee you like. Just brew your pot of coffee. We had coffee this morning yep. when we're editing your video. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so just brewed coffee. This is some brewed Starbucks Pike. So we're gonna do a half a cup of that. So now we're gonna add the cream portion of that. And that is going to be one cup of heavy cream. And we have one cup of heavy cream. You're gonna drop that in there for me. I'll put this back. Yeah. Doing my part. Yeah, I'm putting you to work. Putting you to work. So next we're gonna be going with um, a half a teaspoon of almond extract and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. The spoons are right there. So we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of each of these. So I didn't realize at first that there was like cocoa and vanilla and almond in this. So, you know, hey, learn something new. So yep, yeah, that's the half teaspoon. This is the almond. But every recipe I've seen have the cocoa, have the vanilla, have the almond, so we're rolling with that. So this is like a combination of three or four different recipes I found. And this all got started with um, a guy on Reddit who posted his version of a Bailey's Irish Cream. Um, Hibernian Ghost was his, uh, was his name on Instagram. Oh. Reddit. On, on Reddit, yeah, on, on Reddit. Too many social media platforms I'm on. Um, so he kind of posted his recipe up there and I said, hey man, do you mind if I use this? He said, no, go right ahead. So this is to you, guy. This is, this is awesome. Thanks for putting it out there and getting me inspired to do this. But I did find a few other recipes and I kind of tweaked them around myself. He used a cold brew mm -hmm. um, and his ratios were a little bit different on these other things. So we're, we'll be doing this. So now, the next part is gonna be this your whiskey, your Irish whiskey. And I've seen some videos of people going, you know, um, we're gonna use vodka, we're gonna use rum, but they still thumbnail it and title it as Irish whiskey or as an Irish cream. So uh, we're not, we're using Irish whiskey. And of course, right there, Jameson's, two over, there you go, green bottle. There you go. Jameson's Irish whiskey. Um, you can do a couple of different brands, but this is like, you know, your base Irish whiskey, 
tastes great. You can't go wrong. If you're looking for Irish whiskey, to, to grab a bottle of Jameson's. Now I think Jameson's does make a cold, or make a like a coffee barrel something, some type of coffee brew Irish whiskey, and you probably can use that and leave out the coffee. I don't know, something you can play with. So we're gonna start off with no, no, my measuring cup right here. It's got the cream in it. Now with this here again, I've seen some different ratios on a whiskey. So we're gonna start off with a half a cup, and some people say a full cup. So we're gonna start with a half cup. We're gonna taste it, see how it comes out, and we'll go from there. So we're gonna start off with a half cup. Turn it this way so I can see, of Irish whiskey. This is the fun part. I suggest you back up. Yeah, because you don't have the lid, I think. Yeah, I have the lid, but I can't find my ring. Yeah. So we're going to shake this up and hope for the best. <laughs> so put that on a tight, squeeze that up really good. Let's get that and let's see what the hell happens. I don't know. Now, there's a couple of different methods that uh, I've seen some people say, put it in a blender. Some people say, uh, put it on the stove and put it all together on a stove. And some people say, just shake it. We're going with the easy method. We don't want to try making anything really hard or complicated. So um, let's kind of see. Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? Taste test. Uh, yep, yep, yep. The little pretty glass. Mm -hmm. So. Taste it. Tell me what you think. Dang. I think it needs more whiskey. Well, I, 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 it's, it's delicious. Good. It's really good. But I'm really not picking up the Irish whiskey. So we're gonna put another half cup in this. And we're gonna shake it and see where we're at. So, so far on our ingredients, as I mentioned earlier, and I'll throw them down in the description below, we ended up with this makes a one cup of Irish whiskey. And hey, not too bad, hey. You did good. I did good. Now, probably not this time. So that's only a whole nother story. I really need to get some new mason jars, the big ones. I don't want to get that kind of in there too much. So let's go with this. Now, this is one cup of Irish whiskey. That's Irish whiskey. That's what it is. That's it. That's it. No doubt. Now, and if you try this, and again, I like to taste my alcohol in my mixer. So if you taste it at a half cup and you think it's good, stay with that. Uh, I would maybe jump up to another quarter cup, making it three quarters cup, um, if you're not really into a, a good strong drink. Because this is great on ice by itself. And that's why I went with a full cup. Now, if I'm using it strictly as a mixer, I probably would tone that down a little bit so some of the other flavors play through heavier. Right. I want the whiskey to play through a little heavier than the cocoa, than the vanilla, than the almond, than the other sweeteners. So that's why I chose to add a full cup of the whiskey instead. But um, because I will be drinking this on ice. So. Just in a few minutes. Just in a few minutes, guys. So that's great. So this is our low carb and uh, it's keto friendly. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, heavy cream. Where are we on carbs on heavy cream? It's, I know it's low, it's oh, a yeah, big thing on like keto. One gram of carbs per tablespoon, math, math, math. It'll be in the description below. But, um, so yeah, uh, Irish whiskey, no carbs. The Swerve Brown, it's a sugar alcohol, so no carbs. All you lose, no carbs. Brewed coffee, no carbs. Almond extract, limit of uh, vanilla extract, no carbs. So the only carbs will be coming from the heavy cream. Dogs barking. Yep. Dogs barking. So the only carbs in this is gonna come direct, directly from the heavy cream itself. And that's gonna be a, what I did, full cup, eight ounces. So I'll have the math in the description, blah, 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 and we're done. So, um, so now what I have coming up next, guys, is make sure you come back and check out my channel in, uh, three or four days, because I'll be having a bunch of Bailey cocktails um, mixed with some other things, oh, using yeah. using the Baileys as an ingredient, right. in, as a mixer as well. So that should come out great. So it is it is winter times coming, it's coming up soon. Um, here in South Louisiana, um, we don't get winter. Don't get it much. We get, we get a cold February, Yeah, that's about it. So <laughs> with all everybody else, people out there up north who's already getting these really cold drops in temperatures, things like that. Um, Baileys is a great thing for holidays. And if you can batch this out, if you double this recipe and use a really big jar uh, or whatever you can, um, the one I use in my triple sec, which is like big old jar, 
So, but uh, you can serve this up into little smaller bottles as, as Christmas gifts for people. Oh, yeah. And that's what I did last year. Last year I did with my Kahlua. And, uh, oh, check out my Kahlua video. I'll, I'll have a link in the description below for that. Um, these little little like crafts, little things you make yourself, like little like just craft projects right. of making a, a mixer or a liqueur, make great holiday gifts oh, for yeah. people. So, Definitely. and I, I gave out a ton of, of my Kahlua last year. I um, think I'm gonna be doing some uh, some Bailey's and some Kahlua this year as gifts with that. All right, guys, so that's it for me. Um, and guys, we just oh, finished yeah. editing Mr. Barry's um, bread video. So that uh, check out his channel. There'll be a link in the description yeah. below to his bread video, which yeah. is up right now. Just went up just went up about an hour ago that's why he's here we were doing some yep. final editing and touch-ups on it so guys that's it for me y'all have a great day and um i think i'm gonna i might finish this today it's that damn good yeah i'll be having a great day too and you'll take some home oh, you'll be definitely. having a great day too that's it all right guys see y'all later hi and welcome to low carb cocktails i'm frank Today I'm going to show you how to make a super easy, super fast Kahlua. So, but before I get started, if you'd like to learn more about making cocktails keto friendly and low carb, click the little subscribe button and the bell icon because that'll tell you every time I put a new video out. So let's get started. There is a whole bunch of recipes on the internet on how to make coffee liqueur Kahlua. Now I'll say this, the difference between a coffee liqueur and a Kahlua is basically your base spirit. A coffee liqueur you'll find using it's mostly vodkas and maybe sometimes some Everclear. Kahlua is a rum-based spirit. So with this, we're gonna be using a rum. So if you see a recipe that says DIY Kahlua and they're using vodka, that's not Kahlua. Kahlua is a rum-based drink. So we're gonna get into get started, show you how to do this. Very, very simple. Um, you don't need to let it sit for two weeks. You don't need coffee grinds. You don't need um, instant coffee. You don't need coffee beans. You need coffee. That's it just coffee 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 just make a pot of your coffee whatever coffee you prefer i would highly recommend using that i don't like the taste of instant coffee so i'm not gonna like that in my kahlua so the coffee we use here at my house starbucks pike that's it so i just made a pot of coffee put some aside and this is what i'm using as my base because I find this way, whatever you enjoy drinking in your morning coffee, your afternoon coffee, your evening coffee, you're gonna want that taste in your Kahlua. So that's what we're doing. So now your sweetener, uh, if you watched my last video on my allulose simple syrup, you can see that video right here. I have one cup of allulose, I'm gonna add one cup of coffee. That's it, it's just brewed coffee. So one cup of allulose, one cup of coffee and put that in here and we get a spoon i'm just going to stir that up until it's all dissolved you can put this in a mason jar and shake it. Um, it'll go a little faster, it'll dissolve a little quicker. And to this, we're gonna add one cup of rum. If you wanna use a little more bold uh, flavor, use a darker rum. If you want some a little more mild, the way it tastes more of the coffee stands out on its own, use a lighter rum. That's basically how you can handle that. So I'm gonna use one cup of you know, a decent cheap rum. I'm not using a bottle that has the word rum written in, in black letters and that's it. Using some Don Q Crystal. It's like, you know, 10, 12 bucks. I'm not gonna use the high-end rum for this. That'd be kind of be pointless. Again, give that a little stir. Now for the last little bit of it, vanilla extract. For this is gonna end up being two cups of Kahlua, I'm gonna use a half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm 
Give that another quick little stir. Oh, that's yummy. Now, for the next thing you do is you're gonna put it in an airtight container, put that in your fridge. It should last you, you know, four or five weeks, unless you're having a really fun night with white Russians, black Russians, or the pumpkin spiced latte, I mean spiked latte, you know, that video will be out next, so keep an eye out for that one. So, in a container, you can use a mason jar, those are airtight as well. So if a funnel, and just put said ingredients, blend it together in said container. And that is it, my friends. You're a DIY coffee liqueur or your Kahlua substitute. All right, y'all have a great day because in a moment, I'll be having a great day too. See y'all later.